Hi everyone, this is Kieran Eversapien for Filmstorm Studios and in today's tutorial this is going to be a continuation of our footstep sounds and in this tutorial I'm actually going to show you how to create different footstep sounds for different terrains. So I've actually got um, a terrain set up here with a cobblestone and a snow texture and then I've also got these different objects um, that we can set up different sounds on. So I'm going to show you how to do that and it's fairly simple. So make sure you've done the first footstep tutorial before you start this because we're going to be using the same um, FSMs that we're using. Alrighty, so to start off with we're actually going to um, create a new game object but I've already done that, just call it sound base and this is where we're going to set up our different sounds and all we're going to do is really come in just create a new audio source and then just drag it in here so you can even come in here and then just I've got all my different sounds so I've got a, a step sound and you just come in here and then you probably want to make it have a spatial blend of around 6.5 and that will do and this is all you're gonna do and then all you're gonna do is pretty much rename this to step either if it's gonna be on the left foot or on the right foot and give it a, a name as to if it's on the snow or what kind of sound but I've already done that and then before we leave here we want to make sure you go and turn all of them off don't turn this one off just turn the um, top one off as this is what we're actually going to be um, turning on and off to create the sounds as he's walking. Alright, so once that's all set up, we're going to come up to our player and we're going to create a new FSM. And let's drop this guy down and we're going to call this the Terrain Analyzer. Perfect. Now we're going to need one script for this guy and you're going to go up to your Playmaker add-ons and into your ecosystem. And we're just going to look up uh, get terrain. That should do it. And you're going to want to import this one, the get terrain texture name. It's a really handy script, and I'll show you how it works in a second. So we're going to create two states, and we're going to call this uh, loop get name, and we're going to call this one loop <laughs> get name two, because this is essentially just getting the name of the texture that's currently on the terrain above uh, or actually below where our character is. So let's go into here and I'll just drag this down a bit and we're going to go into the action browser and say get terrain texture name and we're also going to look for a next frame event and this is essentially going to create a loop and we're going to create a finished and a finished. Perfect. And we're going to hook in our terrain and we're actually going to create a string variable and we're going to call this name of texture because this is going to be the name of the texture on our terrain. So we're going to hook that in there, send the frame event and we're going to copy these two and we're going to paste these guys in here. So this is going to create a loop that loops and then gives us the name of the texture. So if I press play, you'll notice it's going, whoop, let me scroll down. It's gonna say this one is the stone and now we're on the snow and then stone, snow. So this is how we can trigger the different sounds to play. So now let's go in and we're gonna create another FSM and we're gonna play, call this the terrain, or actually we're gonna call this the sound manager. So let's ex um, extend this guy. And to start off, we're just gonna be um, get um, name um, start, because this is what we're gonna actually get the name from the terrain analyzer to decide with what we're gonna do with it. So let's create a new variable. We're gonna create another string. We're gonna call this um, got name of texture. And we're gonna turn that on as well so we can see what's happening. And we're just gonna get FSM string and we're gonna hook that into the terrain uh, analyzer, get the name of the texture and got name of texture every frame. Now we need a way to actually decipher and decide where we're gonna send it. So before we do that, we've actually got, uh, we've got a stone, we've got a snow. So let's set up two events. We're gonna say to snow or to stone. And we can also create another one for two object for when we set up the object sounds. 
So let's hook in these transitions. So we're going to say to snow, to stone, and to object. And let's just create another two states. So let's call the bottom one a stone. And let's call the top one a snow. And let's also hook in these events while we're here. So to stone and to object, because we don't need to go to snow. And to snow and to object. And let's create an object. And let's hook all of these guys up. So let's just make sure that we have everything connected. So snow and stone, snow and object and object and object. Oh, I got that one wrong. And to object. So everything's all linked together. So now we need a way to tell it to go to each one. So we need to create a string contains. And then this is where it is important to actually name your texture something simple. So make it really clear cut. So on my stone texture, if I look up stone, my stone texture is just called stone and my snow is just called snow. So this makes it nice and simple for your um, to be able to find out what your um, string thing is actually deciphering. So in my got name of texture, I'm going to test if it contains stone. And if it's true, I'm going to send it to go to stone every frame. Copy and paste this guy under, and we're just going to pretty much do the same thing for snow. If it contains snow, we're going to make it go to snow. Perfect. Now, what we're going to do is copy uh, these three. We're going to paste them into both of them. And let's get rid of the snow one because we're already in snow. And in stone, let's get rid of the stone one. So now that's going to create this nice loop in between these things. But now we need a way for it to activate and um, be able to tell this what object, <laughs> what, what we're actually on to our feet, which are actually going to be activating and disabling it depending on when his foot is touching the ground. Now it sounds complicated, but it's not too bad. So we're going to say um, game object and we're just going to say um, left foot sound. And we're going to create another one called right foot sound. So this is basically what we're going to just say set game object. And we're going to set the left foot sound because now we're in the snow to the left snow sound. Copy and paste this guy under. And now we're going to set the right foot sound to the step snow right. We can copy these two and paste them into the stone and we'll just change it to the stone sounds. So let's put in the step stone for the left and the step stone right for the right one. Perfect. So now that we have our different stone and snow things set up, let's go and make sure we're gonna be turning it on and off correctly in our footsteps. So here we have our left foot up. This is what we created in the previous tutorial and we have our left foot down. Now I've just gone in and turned off the um, play sound because we uh, we don't need that. So all we're going to do is say get FSM game object and we're going to be getting it and we're going to be um, testing it and we're going to call this current left sound um, inspector and we're going to go and find that uh, sound manager and we're going to get the left foot sound because we're in the left foot at the moment and we're going to store this as the current left sound every frame and we're going to actually go and say activate game object because we're going to be turning it off and on and we're going to be activating the left sound we're going to activate it and then we're going to reset it on exit so it's actually going to turn the current sound on and it's going to turn back off again every frame or well, you don't actually have to have this one in every frame. We just need this one in every frame. So that's all perfect. So now we can pretty much copy these two. And let's go to the right foot and paste these two in. And we just need to create a current left sound game object. So let's make sure it's game object current um, right sound. So this is going to be the current right sound that is playing on our foot. So let's go and specify the current right sound, turn it off and on, and we're going to be getting the right foot sound from the sound manager and store this as the right sound. So that's all set up. So now let's just finish setting up the detection for our objects. 
let's um, double check everything. So now we have our get start name, we have our snow, and we also have our stone. So now we just need a way to be able to send this all to the object as well. So as you can see, we have the terrain, and we just need it for to detect when the character is actually above an object. So let's just go to the first one, and we're just going to create a simple raycast. Raycast. And we're actually going to uh, specify it from a little falling base, which is actually just an object that's just slightly above the ground. So you can see if I turn it on, we're just going to shoot a ray down just from there. And let's just go back to here. And we're going to create a distance of maybe 1.5. Direction negative y, so minus 1, and we're actually just going to be storing the hit object. So we need to create a new variable. I'm going to call this hit object. Perfect. Now let's go back to state, store that, and that's all we're going to do. And now we're just going to create a game object compare tag. And we're going to compare the hit object to see if it actually has a tag. So let's just create a tag on our terrain and let's create a terrain tag. I haven't, um, I've already got it created, but just go add, create it, and then make sure you come and apply it again. And then we're just gonna compare it to see if it is a terrain. And then if it is terrain, we're just gonna say, oh, we'll let it continue. Um, but if not, we're gonna say, um, then go to the object. So if the tag is not terrain, if it's false, we're gonna go to the object every frame. Now let's just copy and paste this guy into both the snow and into the stone. Alrighty, so now let's also paste this into the object, except we're going to, instead of being to that, we're going to create another one. And let's just say to decide which sound. Because we're going from the object, let's go back to decide which sound we're going to play. So if it is actually true, we're going to go back to the to start. All right, so let's give this a quick test. So let's press play. Alrighty, so you can hear that we have our cobblestone footstep sounds playing. And now we have our um, snow sound playing as well. Yeah, that's, that's sounding really nice. So we've got our, our two detections working. Now let's... Um, Let's go down here and let's see what happens. Oh, where, are we, where are we in the sound manager? Let's see what happens when we go um, onto the object. There we go. So now we just need to set up an object sound to play it while we're on the object. And then you'll notice if I jump back down to the um, stone, we're actually um, playing the stone sound again. So let's come into here. We're just going to copy this guy, we're going to actually paste these two set game objects because we're going to do the exact same thing that we did for all the other ones. We're just going to, uh, let's make it a step hard on the left and a step hard right. Too easy. All right. Now let's press play. How's that? That's sounding very nice. All right, so that's sounding really good. So we've got all of our different um, detections working. And of course, you can always um, even make it a little bit more complicated. So say you have two objects. Let's create another tag, and we'll call this one metal on this cube. So I've already got that all set up. So just if you want to make this one, create metal. Now I go back to your player. We'll scroll all the way back down and go to the sound manager. And we can actually create another one. So we can say this event to metal. Ah to metal, not metal. Excellent. So let's go add transition to metal. Let's create another state. And we can even copy all of these guys because we're going to need them. Copy and paste these guys in here. We're going to call this state the metal. And if this object is terrain, we're going to send it back to terrain. If uh, we can even get a um, game object compare tag. So um, 
if you if you really want to hook um, in so that way you actually have better detection if he jumps back over terrain quicker it will detect a bit faster but you can copy these guys into here but let's we'll just do this for the time being and we'll say um, back to default sound which is actually going to be back to this um, object so let's put this guy in back to default and let's create another tag so if this guy if he is not true to um, the metal we're actually going to send it back to default and let's copy this tag this is what we're going to send to metal paste this after and if metal is true we're going to send it to play metal Alrighty, now we just have to set the two metal sounds. So let's put left and right. Lovely. And now if we go play, we have our footstep sounds here. We have our snow footstep sounds. And then we have these sounds. Now if we jump onto this object, So that's all working quite nicely. We've got all the different sounds going on. And even if I go up my ladder, you'll see that the, um, the sound will transition straight to the metal. So that's perfect. Alrighty, so that's pretty much um, set up the whole multi-terrain object sound collision system. If, that, if that's what you want to call it. Um, this has been uh, Kieran Obersapien for Filmstorm Studios. Of course, if you have any questions, just um, let me know, send me a message, and I can um, try and answer them for you. Um, as always, um, you can always check out filmstorm.net. Use the coupon Stormy Night to get 20% off this launch month. Um, if that time's passed, you can always um, look for latest coupons on the coupon area on the site. Um, but Apart from that, I hope you enjoy this um, tutorial, I hope you found it interesting, and from us all, we hope you have a Merry Christmas. Alright, bye.